This is Resolute and the Resolute Podcast, where we are discipling and developing men to live with conviction. I am Vince Miller, your host, and today we're in a series of lessons we're calling the Fighter Pilot Mindset. Today's lesson, ownership. Welcome back to the program. If this is your first time tuning in, well, thank you for joining us. The Resolute Podcast is produced multiple times every week. We have Resolute Study Guides that go along with these podcasts and other tools for your men's group found on the website for members at bresolute.org. Come back often. Feel free to add the podcast to your favorite RSS feed or in iTunes. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. All these links are located on the home page of our website. So let's dive in. So guys, over the next few lessons, I want to share with you teachings I have been learning from a good friend of mine, Chris Kelzer. Chris is a former F-18 pilot and today teaches leadership at T-6 Victory, which is a Dallas-Fort Worth and Twin Cities-based leadership program that uses flight experiences to teach civilians leadership lessons about life. Chris's thoughts on the fighter pilot mindset are profound and compelling from my standpoint. And for a guy like me who has only dreamed of being a fighter pilot, I have had the fantastic opportunity to learn from him. Chris is a remarkable man who both loves God and lives his life with excellence. For me, he is the representation of the resolute man. So over the next few lessons, we're going to be looking at what T6 Victory teaches about the fighter pilot mindset. Here is their definition of the FPM. The fighter pilot mindset selflessly commits to normalized excellence, willingly chooses to be accountable, habitually accomplishes critical tasks, and continuously improves by using quality tools. You know, their definition of this mindset is composed of four factors which I want to address. The first topic today is the topic of ownership and accountability. The word ownership, when it addresses an object, means to have a legal title to possess something. For example, I own my vehicles. I don't lease them. I don't have a lien on them. Therefore, I own them and have legal title to possess each of them. But the same word can also be used to reference a mindset. And when we do that, it has a very interesting application. You know, one thing that Chris has taught me is that A fighter pilot must have an ownership mindset. This is what he's getting after when he's talking about accountability. Here's one way to illustrate this. Let's say you head out on a trip to another state, and when you arrive, you rent a car. In this situation, we do not own the vehicle, and therefore our mentality is slightly altered. Now, We can be tempted to drive the car with a non-ownership mentality, which believes we do not have to care for it the same way we would if we owned it. Or we can drive the car with an ownership mindset, which assumes full ownership of the car. So let's say you drove the vehicle all week. Since you're required to return the vehicle with a full tank of gas, you make a final stop at a nearby gas station. However... When you are about to fill up the car, listen carefully, you notice the gap cap reads premium gasoline only in large print, all caps. (laughs) But then you look back at the pump to see that premium is much more expensive per gallon. The question is, what do you do next? (laughs) But remember, your next decision determines what Chris Kelzer calls the ownership mindset. What is interesting about this very moment is that this is the moment that we lay on the fulcrum between two mindsets in a single choice, ownership and non-ownership. We can choose to care for the car as if we own it or care for the car as if we don't, right? This moment for the fighter pilot is the difference between disaster 
and success. So hear me out on this. When we own something, we project into this subsequent responsibility, right? When I own something, I'm responsible for it. Responsibility assumes action must partner with the ownership. Did you catch that? That when we're responsible, action must partner inside of that ownership. Therefore, when we view something we do not own with an ownership mindset, we are choosing to take measures to care for it out of some internal motivation. Because of this, we can conclude that the non-owner is lazy and maybe careless because they they, they decide against an action that is not their responsibility from the non-ownership mentality. So you've probably heard this statement. The statement, it's not my job, is a sure indicator of a non-owner and a mine that is siloed and overtaken with non-ownership. And for the fighter pilot, an ownership mindset is essential. If a pilot fails to own his attitude, behavior, mission, equipment, and even relationships with the team, then lives and freedoms are lost. So we, gentlemen, need a fighter pilot to have a mindset of extreme ownership, although in reality, he owns nothing. Not the equipment on his back, not the plane he navigates, the patterns he flies, or the weapons that dangle underneath his plane. The ownership mindset is what we hang the hopes of all our freedom on. Did you hear me? We hang the hopes of all of our freedom on the fact that a man getting into a plane who is a fighter pilot possesses extreme ownership of what he's about to do. The fact that he owns everything, every action he takes down to the final final detail is very important. What I have come to discover is that the mindset that Chris is teaching me about has a lot to do with something both in my mind and heart, but even deeper into my desires. You know, for private citizens like you and me, which probably most of us are, who are not per se fighter pilots, we can possess this mindset and it is possible to build even, to build A mindset that is willing to take our motivation, thoughts, and actions to a complete another level. We build this mindset by owning our performance at work. We build this mindset when we drive to excel at performing with higher excellence every day, even when it's not necessary. We develop, then thus, the ownership mindset. When we choose to set the alarm early to dig into spiritual disciplines, we develop the ownership mindset. When we admit our faults and mistakes, when we have made an error, we develop the ownership mindset. When we accept accountability from another man, we develop the ownership mindset. However, we must note that while extreme ownership can have healthy expression, it can also have unhealthy expressions. For example, ownership can become so high that we overpossess or even overinflate our ego. This is a misconception of ownership. For the Christian man knows that we possess nothing. We are only stewards, not literal owners of anything. However, this does not disqualify our endeavor for the ownership mindset. It only clarifies its human limits. For the Christian man, ownership should mean owning our sin, owning the ramifications of our sin, owning our faith, owning our mission to make disciples, owning the spiritual gifting that we have been given by God and caring for his creation in a way that honors him, God, alone. This ownership mindset is what I would dare to call extreme ownership as it takes into consideration the fact that God is the only true owner and we steward with a focused assumption that we steward all things as we own them, recognizing God owns all things. Do you love that? That is great stuff. And when we do, we direct all our attention and glory to him, not self. 
Could this understanding be part of what Jesus intended in the Great Commandments? Could it not? I mean, Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven 37 through 39 reads, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your, all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Is Jesus not suggesting extreme spiritual ownership? Do not miss the weight of words in this text. Words like love, all, heart, soul, mind, and as yourself. Was Jesus not summing up all of Christianity into a couple of sentences to capture the ownership of all who God is? and even what it looks like to interact with people within creation. So, gentlemen, here is my challenge for you today. Own it. Own something. Own a mistake. A failure of your team. Own a decision. Own your faith. Pick up trash in the hallway of your workplace and own your business. Give feedback and own the process. Hold someone accountable and own their future success. Own your marriage and call your wife and love on her. Own your failures and correct them. And finally, own the rental car as if it is your own and put some premium gasoline in it, will you? Own it. And if you want to take this topic... A little further, Chris suggested picking up a book entitled Extreme Ownership, written by two former Navy SEALs who served in Iraq. And for all our members today, I'm going to give you a few links that will go along with this book uh, that I'm going to post on our website for you. I want you to grab a couple of short videos from these Navy SEALs if you want. They are very compelling on this particular subject. So there you have it. That's the show, gentlemen. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed our time today, I hope that you'll pass along this podcast to other men you know. Just head to our website, beresolute.org, grab the app, or simply share the feed. And guys, if you're looking for a way to kind of, kind of up the level of ownership of your own spiritual life, I want you to go to our website today and grab the Men's Daily Devo. I'd love to have you sign up for that. It'll make a huge difference in your life. You just get a short little devotional in your inbox every day with a verse and a challenge that will wake you up every morning with something to own at another level. So guys, I love you. Get off the bench, get into the game, and join us right back here next time for another edition of the Resolute Podcast.